So this time what we're going to do, we're going to have a shape in there. So we're going to start off with a uh, star. And we can change the colour of our star. And let's have a uh, dark blue in there. And we'll have, uh, let's get rid of the stroke first of all. We'll put a stroke in afterwards if we wish. And we can decide whether we want a shadow or not. So straight away, that's a lot easier. And the nice interface there, much better than you get with the text. And really we should have a simple sort of interface like this for the text as well. You can choose how much offset you want. You can choose the blur that you want. That's no blur at all. And just move them a little bit blur there. You can choose the angle and we can do that using the uh, change it like that nice and slowly or you can use this say where you want your drop shadow to be so that I think is quite nice and again you've got this uh, little bit of a white edge around the uh, thing there which I don't think is uh, as it should be let's put a stroke around that see if we can cure that we'll put say uh, stroke of a colour there that we can see a bit better let's just change this there to put yellow around the outside and the stroke on here isn't again quite as it should be you've got a bit of a grey sort of colour there around the yellow as well which I don't know it just doesn't seem right it doesn't work as well as you should but I think it's something that needs to be fixed by Pixelmator what we'll do is we're going to do a comparison of this with using Art Text 2 and uh, I think it in some ways works a whole lot better Okay, so here we are in Art Text 2. We've got some text in there already. We'll leave that as it is because I can't be bothered to change it. Just change the size of it a little bit. And uh, what I like about Art Text is the fact that you've got these lines which help you uh, line things up. So we've got our vertical light guideline there. And now I can tell you that it is completely centered. We've got a drop shadow on there already. How easy is it to do shadows in this? And of course the shadows do a little better. We haven't got a white edge around it and we can choose how much glow we want on there how much blur we want on there we can change it from a shadow to a glow if we want as well so that puts the glow all around the edge of it rather than just on the uh, one edge of it so we've got a shadow or glow we can choose the distance on there so let's uh, move the distance up away from the object a bit more changing it to uh, from 3 something to 14, 15 we can change the angle on there as well, so the moment it's set to there, use the little circle thing, that's quite a nice way of doing it. When you touch that, it does change the distance on there, so I've got to change the distance back again to uh, 15 as I had it before. So there's our little foibles in there that uh, could be set up a little bit better perhaps. And we'll change the blur again. So we've got a combination of sliders and where you can actually put a number in there, which is quite nice, I like that. Okay, so that's how easy it is to put a drop shadow on anything. And when you're doing it within uh, this art text application, it doesn't really matter whether it's a uh, bit of text or if it's something else like uh, one of these things, perhaps. So let's put the blur down because I've got too much blur on there. Uh, distance was what I wanted to change to 15. And so we've got the blur. I'm going to have to change again because I'm going to touch this uh, button here, look. As you can see, it is pretty easy to do drop shadows in art text, and in a lot of ways it's easier than if it was being done in a Pixelmator. Change the shape to something else. Let's just uh, change the size of it so it fits in better. Okay, so there's our shape we've got now, and as I say, you can put a stroke on there. Got a black stroke on there, which is quite nice. There you go, black stroke. Now, uh, what's good about this, of course, is the fact that you don't have just to have one colour of a stroke. You can have more than one stroke on there, and you can change the widths of these strokes to suit as you see fit. So that's something that you can't easily do within Pixelmator. It can be done, of course, but uh, not quite as easy as you can do in Art Text. I do like Pixelmator, but there are some things which are better within within this. Another thing that is good within this one as well, if we're doing a comparison there, is we've got a shape object there, and if we want to do a gradient in there, we can put a gradient into a vector shape object, which is something that you can't do in Pixelmator. If you want to have a gradient in a shape object in Pixelmator, you have to change it to a bitmap object. In text, edit a shape. Now this is something you really can't do in Pixelmator. You can't get in there and adjust the individual nodes of text like this. So click OK on that. How about that then? 
Artext is a marvellous application and I think it's something that you should have in your toolbox of graphics applications to work alongside using with Pixelmator. What I can do with this all of course is to go to the file menu, do an export, so I'll export out as a PNG and I'll put it into my Artext 2 folder, click on save. OK, here we are back in Pixelmator again. OK, so in our new finder window, there we go, look, there's our art text that we just created. And I want to put this into an application which I've got full screen, so I've got an application on here as well called the Yoink. So if I drag that off there and put it into that there, now I'll go to our Pixelmator window. I can drag this off here and drop it into there. How about that then? OK, I've got the art text layer selected. Now what I'm going to do is change the size of it, hold down the shift key so that it stays the right proportions, bring that across. Now there you go, the stuff that I did in our text available to be used in Pixelmator. Don't forget to click on the button OK there to say it's OK and it's read in the right place now. So that's how easy it is to combine using our text too and also to use Pixelmator. How easy is that then? So there you go, a bit more information about using Pixelmator and also about comparisons with Art Text 2. And if there's other things that you'd like to know about, why don't you drop me a line and uh, let me know what you'd like to uh, know how to do with your Mac applications. Hit the like button or subscribe now. Bye bye now.